Hey, how's it going guys? It's Boo from Mile High Distilling and today we're going to take the time to be talking about alcohol meters and hydrometers. So I decided to do this video today because I've seen quite a bit of misinformation on these meters, um, what they do, how they work, and we're just trying to help. People either don't use a hydrometer at all or they're not really familiar with what a hydrometer does and how it works and what they need to do for it. Um, alcohol meters are pretty self-explanatory, but I do see alcohol meters and hydrometers getting mixed up a fair bit. So I wanted to take the time to do this video and sort of just explain the differences on what these meters are and explain how they work. I do really recommend, if you don't already, you start using a hydrometer. Um, hydrometers are great for measuring your uh, estimated alcohol by volume. So let's say you come back in two weeks, everything's still bubbling and you don't really know what to do, well, if you, take, if you took that hydrometer reading initially, then you can come back in, put your hydrometer back in, and it's gonna give you, uh, it's gonna let you know 100% whether that fermentation is done or not. So it can definitely be basically your surefire way to make sure everything's been fermented um, like it should be. And it's also good to just plan ahead. So let's start with a hydrometer and get you a better idea of these scales. So what you'll see on most hydrometers is a three scale reading. And these are as follows. Estimated alcohol volume. And you're gonna see numbers there from 0%, 5%, 10%, all the way up to 20%. So now let's talk about bricks. And this is probably the clearest I'm gonna be able to get this. So apologize if we have some blur. Now what essentially bricks is doing is um, it's really not too much of a concern for a distiller. It's mainly used in the beer brewing world. And what it does is it's going to tell you your residual sugars. So maybe this could have some sort of importance if you are a distiller working with some fruit and you're, you're wondering if those excess sugars from the fruit are working off. Maybe you have a lot of a batch going on and you're worried that you're over sugaring. Uh, you're putting too much sugar in your recipe. Bricks could help there. For the most part, it's not something a distiller would really worry about. And I've got to be completely honest, I've never used it once um, in any of my calculations or for any other reason. So it's got it on there if you want it, but um, you probably won't find a use for it in the distilling world. Now the final scale is your actual gravity scale. So you're going to see a number like 1.160 at the very bottom. And then all the way at top, you're going to see 1.000. You can then pretty easily find out your uh, gravity and then correlate it with the ABV scale right next to it to get you your estimated alcohol by volume. How does a hydrometer work? Well, it's actually right in the name. It's a hydrometer. And so what it'll do is it's designed to be heavier than alcohol, but just the same gravity as water. And what that'll do is when this is put into an actual alcoholic solution, this meter is just going to sink right to the bottom. I'll actually show you here. Hydrometer goes into an alcohol solution and dead weight. But here's the thing, when you add different sorts of bases or liquids that are heavier than water, like a sugar base, tons of particulate, well, this meter isn't that dense. It's not that heavy. So it'll gradually start to float above the sugar base line, essentially, which is why your reading, starting reading is always higher. It's gonna be something like 1.152. It could be many, many things depending on your yeast, but you know, typically is, is right around 15% mark. And then gradually, as that sugar starts to get eaten up and turned into alcohol, now you're going from something heavier than water, like that sugar base, into something lighter than water, alcohol. And so this meter will gradually start to sink since it's heavier, it's just as heavy as water. And then you'll eventually end up with a 1.000 reading at your end of the fermentation. We're gonna give you just an actual demonstration.
And now before we pitch our yeast, because that can sometimes skew with the reading a tiny bit, let's go ahead and grab our starting gravity, SJ reading. Always give it a spin to release CO2 bubbles. Let's see if I can take this up there. Now I'm already bubbling away, guys. It's a really hard to read this meter and keep on track with this camera. I hope you all can see what's going on. I'm at about a 20 bricks level. Now if I take this meter without losing focus, can now correlate it with an ABV scale, a gravity scale of 1.18. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys, this was a second take because I didn't get the, it was too blurry on the first take. The first take I was at 1.100, just a tiny bit higher. It took that about two hours ago. So I know this fermentation is a little bit better than that, that 1.080, but nevertheless, Let's say we go back on our original figure of 1.100. We correlate that to our estimated potential alcohol. And I'm going to be right at about 12, 13%. I, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, honestly, I mean, $10 worth of ingredients, 13% alcohol content. Cool. Cool with me. But there's really nothing else to a hydrometer reading now. We just take our starting gravity. We write it down, 1.100. Estimated at 12% alcohol by volume. Now, obviously, don't forget to pitch your yeast when it cools down. And what we'll see in about probably a few days with this fast I'm using, we'll see in probably just a day or two, we'll take a, another reading. That'll be our final gravity, and I'll show you all the calculation that you need to run to get your estimated, your actual estimated ABV out of everything. Uh, but more or less, I mean, I trust what it's saying to me. It's giving me my, my starting gravity is giving me a good point. The main point of the hydrometer is really just because that's your surefire way to make sure everything's fermented properly. That's why I like to do it. So now let's take the time to talk about our proof and trawls hydrometer, also known as an alcohol meter or alcohol hydrometer. This will give us two scales. Hopefully this isn't blurry. I apologize if it is. What this scale right here is, is a proof scale. So it's a zero to 200 uh, scale. And then if we flip this over, we'll see another scale that goes from zero to 100. And that'll be our trawls scale. So essentially, something to keep in mind is your trawls scale will always be half of what your proof scale is. Um, it's just simple as that. So that there's not much more to reading this. Um, take your proof, which is certifiably your the strength, purity of your alcohol. Then you have your trawl scale, which is basically essentially measuring for, I guess, the impurity left over in your alcohol, if that makes any sense. Let's say you have a 160 proof jar of shine. Obviously, that's 80% alcohol by volume. That means what's in that jar? 80% of that composition is alcohol. The other 20% is water oxygen molecules that haven't been fully distilled out because that's really hard to do. That's essentially what you're looking at. Um, but when you talk about proof, it gets a little bit crazy. and it, It's always been a kind of a hard one for me to explain. Basically, Yes, your ABV is always half of your proof, but those scales aren't mutually exclusive to one another. So really what your purity, your proof scale is, is a purity scale. Let's say you have a 180 proof spirit. Let's say you dial it back down to 80 proof. Well, the fact doesn't change that that started as a 180 proof spirit. 
Um, so even though technically when you go down to 80 proof, it'd be 40% ABV, that is your basic trawls reading, but your measurement for proof pretty much always stays the same at the original distillation proof. That's the way I see it anyway. I could be dead wrong. Um, don't take that all with a grain of salt. That's the way I see things. Ask a scientist. I don't know. I'm not one, but that's how I see things. And you'll see that. It'll be, it'll be evident. Let's say if you ever get the chance, um, we have a small machine like a, an air distiller, Mr. Distiller, which can distill about 100 proof spirit out of a run. Now, then we have our flutes, which can do closer to like 190 proof spirit. Now, if we take both those spirits, put them side by side, temper them down to 40% ABV both, even though they're technically the same ABV, I bet you you'd notice a difference in the cleanliness of the spirit, the way it goes down. And so that's where that proof scale comes in. It, it's purity more than anything. And you really can't take that away no matter what you temper down to. Now, if you call us up and you say, hey, I'm looking for a hydrometer, we are almost always going to think you mean a beer and wine hydrometer. This is technically another type of hydrometer. It's called an alcohol hydrometer, but we call this an alcohol meter to prevent that. And it also makes it make more sense to me because this doesn't have anything, this doesn't measure anything to do with water. This is lighter than water, much, much lighter than water, and it's even lighter than alcohol, which is why it works the way it does. Now here's our fermentation, hasn't been distilled, it's not technically alcohol, it has alcohol in it, but this composition is mainly just water and sugar. And let's go see what happens when I dump this alcohol meter in. It'll just jump right out. And that's because it's so much lighter than everything in this fermentation, technically. This hasn't had long enough to really become alcohol, which is why our hydrometer works, because our hydrometer measures water and sugar. Now, of course, this alcohol meter is a very straightforward device. We have anything with alcohol in it, you know, it could be whatever, as long as it has alcohol. And we give it a spin to eliminate CO2 bubbles, and it goes ahead and gives us a proof. Nothing much more than that. Looks like I'm sitting at 160 proof almost on the dot for this, which is, of course, going to be 80 on my trawls scale, my ABV scale. So anything added to this that is not alcohol will change that scale. doesn't matter if it's an oil, if it's a fruit juice, a water, any, any liquid form, anything liquid to add to this liquid composition is going to change this figure. And those numbers change. It's not a perfect scale, not that I found any way. If this was 160 and I wanted it down to 80, I couldn't half this with water. I'd come out closer to like 30 proof that way, in my experience. But maybe you'll have different findings than I do. But I will go ahead and show you, if we were to add, let's say, two tablespoons of water, what will our proof go down? So guys, that knocked us down to close to 150. We're, we're probably closer to like 155, maybe. But two tiny dabs of water got us down five proof. So water is a little bit of a hard scale. Uh, I would personally recommending, recommend taking it tablespoons at a time if you're trying to dilute. But at the end of the day, do what you want and just take those very frequent alcohol meter readings. Now the last little bit of info we have to talk about on these meters is the temperature correction chart that will be included in the packaging for the meter. This will change your gravity reading or your alcohol reading ever so slightly depending on what temperature um, your, your alcohol or your fermentation is at. Um, it's, it's so slight. It's 0 0.003, something like that. In terms of uh, you know a 20 degree variable in temperature, it's only going to change your reading on your gravity about 0.003 percent. So personally, I don't even mess with these. You definitely can if you want. If you do that route, you'll obviously need access to some sort of meter that can float, floating thermometer, and um, and then just follow the chart. It's always included on on your packaging for your meter. So shouldn't ever be an issue, or just ignore it if you want. These are there's a lot of things in this craft that you really can ignore, and some people consider it cutting corners. 
other people consider it just, you know, using their time wisely, which something like this is what I consider just why even bother. Um, it's going to change it's going to change my ABV reading by less than a percent and um, just another step you don't necessarily have to take. All right, guys, check it out. So it has been only a little over 48 hours and I am already completely converted. So really good yeast. I'm really happy with this Still Spirits Fast Yeast. So I am 0 0.990. So I have converted every last sugar in this and now I can run my final calculation to get my my actual potential alcohol. So now that we have our final gravity reading we can take our starting gravity reading and our final gravity reading. We could run it through an ABV calculator online and that would give us our actual ABV volume or we could just run a simple calculation like this. We can do our starting gravity minus our final gravity that gives me 0.11 and then we can times that by 131.25. Why that number? I don't know. But that's the calculation. Someone figured that out. And that is my potential alcohol, 14.43. So instead of the estimated alcohol at 13%, now that we fully converted, I should be expecting 14.5 ABV. Pretty solid fermentation. So really hope this has shed the light a little bit on differences between a beer and wine hydrometer and a, an alcohol hydrometer or alcohol meter um, and how they work.